Okay, well, this is a song uh, that I wrote the music for. The lyrics are by the Ukrainian American poet Ilya Kaminsky. And when they bombed other people's houses, we protested, but not enough. We opposed them, but not enough. I was in my bed, around my bed, America was falling invisible house by invisible house by invisible house I took a chair outside and watched the sun in the sixth month of a disastrous rain in the house of money in the street of money in the city of money in the country of money our great country of money we Forgive us, we lived happily, we lived happily, we lived happily during the war, we lived happily, we lived happily, we lived happily, we lived happily during the war. We lived happily, we lived happily, we lived happily during the war. Woo! Well, very good. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah, you're welcome. Hey. <laughs> welcome to Friday PM. Uh, my name is Luigi Scarcelli. Uh, glad you're all here. I'm happy to welcome John Elliott. He's coming Hello. down from the coast, uh, from San Francisco, correct? Right. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Great song. So let's just start out. Tell me about that song. It's a Ukrainian poet. Yeah, that song is a, uh, the poem appeared across my Instagram feed uh, when all this started over there recently, or restarted, or continued to go on, and we wow. suddenly were made aware of it by our media. Um, and I, I just was really struck by it. I couldn't find the words to say what I was feeling about it. And that poem perfectly expressed what I was feeling. Sure. So I put it to music and I've been singing it. Is that a newer song? Or yeah, that's brand new. Brand new, okay. Yeah, I mean the last couple of weeks. So John is going to be playing tonight at Blue. But by the time you see this, uh, he will already have been back in San Francisco, yeah, is my guess. Probably, yeah. Uh, but uh, let's, let's kind of talk a little bit about yourself, uh, your background. Uh, you were born in Minnesota, I think, is yep, that correct? Yeah, born in Minnesota, uh, the suburbs of Minneapolis, the right. Twin Cities. Okay. Yeah, that's where I grew up. Sure. And uh, what was life like in Minnesota in, in those days? In the, the 80s, right? Yeah, the 80s. Right, yeah. What was life like? I think of my childhood is the idyllic suburban upbringing of that time you know i was mowing the lawns for ten dollars a lawn right. for my first job listening on the headphones to the music cranked up and the music was guns and roses on cassette you know yeah um yeah i played catch in the backyard with my dad i he made hamburgers <laughs> yeah, it's it's kind of like the d early days of like malls and things like oh, that. Oh yeah, right? the, the I middle remember America. the mid days of malls. I mean, yeah, the arcade. I would go to the arcade. Right, right. Yeah, all that stuff. 
<laughs> and so uh, you took off, uh, went to college. Mm -hmm. Where th that was? Where was that located? At Northwestern in North Evanston, Evanston, still in the Midwest. Yeah. Okay. Illinois. That's a uh, that's a pretty idyllic place too. Oh yeah. yeah. I mean, uh, that's the thing is those are all curated lawns and landscapes. And when I graduated from college and moved to Brooklyn, suddenly I was in the real world. Right. When, that's right. the way I think about it. Yeah. Yeah. How old were you when you moved to Brooklyn? Was that when you were? 21. 21, whatever, yeah. yeah. And is that kind of where you started with the musical career? I think we talked a little about that you did some music in college, but you were kind of doing other things too. I was doing theater mostly in college. Right. I, I mean, right. I, I started playing the guitar when I was seven, so I right. always played the guitar and was in bands, and, and music was a big part of my life, but I was thinking that I was going to be an actor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's what, I mean, what do you know? Yeah, exactly, I was thinking, right. Yeah, college is so funny because you can either pay a bunch of money and have the, the experience of those years of discovering yourself or not, but it's going to be the same four years. It's right. going to be who am I, right, right. getting to know yourself and other people and how you're going to be. And right. then you still don't know, but then you at least got to try something. And so you were, you, you get to New York, you get to Brooklyn. Yeah, we, and and I was there and I, yeah. I was r trying to write songs and trying to figure out how that was going to work. And like I said, I had friends in California as well. And the first winter came and it just felt like I wanted to try something different. I, I didn't last very long in New York. Right. It was a year or two? Not even a year. Not even a year. Half yeah. a year. And so f straight from New York was L.A. right yeah. after that. Okay. Yeah, I went. Well, I, actually, yeah, yeah, I yeah. always forget this. This is right. an important detail. Yeah. I went to L.A. with the idea that I was going to Portland or Seattle because I knew, I mean, at that time, it's the early 2000s, I, I was into grunge. I know it's way too late now. It's like grunge is already over. But to me then, that's where you go to be a musician. It's like smaller independent music, whatever I thought was true, none of which was true. But I got to LA and my friends, there was, we had this house that everybody lived in and the day that I arrived, one of their roommates moved out. So suddenly I, there was a room available to me. So it was like, well, all right, maybe I, uh, Maybe I'll take this room, you know? So I, I took the room. So I lived in, but I didn't want to live in the room with everybody else. So I took the basement room, which no one had been living in and which flooded twice a year and was not climate <laughs> controlled. But it was fine. It was great, right. you know? Well, and, and, and so this is when you kind of picked up more seriously the guitar. Very much. Uh, well, that's, I had been playing all along, but that was where I, in earnest, that's what I was going to make a go at. I was like, I'm not going to, I don't think I'm doing acting. I think I want to do music. Right, right. And then I would go to the open mics and start playing shows around town and, and start meeting people. And yeah, I mean, that for those 2001, two, 2001. three, four, five, six, seven, you that, know, I, yeah. I played every venue there is down there. I mean, in LA. This is LA, right? Every venue with, with different bands and different, I mean, every place. We played every place. So, uh, the interesting part is, is that you're in L.A., and at the time... The interesting part. None of this is interesting. Uh, I, think, I think what the viewer <laughs> will find is just a very fun fact, uh -huh. is that uh, it's John Elliott. We're talking here today, but at the time, you were going by a different name. Well, not going by. I was, bo I was it, born you, under my legal name. Yes. So this is news, Luigi. I don't Correct. know public right, right, right. John Mayer is my legal name. Your real I name? I can show yeah. you my my uh, driver's license, right. named after my grandfather, okay. who was also John Mayer. He's the real John Mayer, by the way. Any right. of this, you know, he's John Mayer. And so you're, you're playing out as John Mayer in L.A. Yeah. And people, uh, this is before the other John Mayer kind of blows up, right? Uh, he was already kind of blown he up. He was already blown up. I, in yeah. uh, 1999, or no, 2000, the, sum, the winter of 2000, I went online to register johnmayer.com. And he had like a one-page website, and I was like, "No way! There's this other guy," right. you know. And it's like, "Well, I guess we'll okay. Let the race is on. Who's going to be the yeah. first and John Mayer? It's you know." And you go the, by John Elliott now. The race now. is very right. bad. <laughs> but yeah, I played this show in L.A. at this place called the Crooked Bar, which 
was underneath the coconut teaser. And I mainly played there because I knew that Guns N' Roses played at the coconut teaser. Right, right, right. And they put your name on the marquee. So it said John Mayer on the marquee. This is 2001. And this table of people was sitting there as I was warming up and I was getting close to showtime. And in their mind, John Mayer has not yet appeared. Right, right, you know? right. And yeah. So one of them came up and asked me, and I knew, I was aware of his existence because of the website thing, but I was like, okay, this is going to be a problem. And then, then he blew up. Right, and then right, it was, right. It was over. That album. And you can't, I mean, you can't, you can't, <laughs> you can't launch a Burger King, you can't launch a hamburger business and call it Burger King. Right, right, right. You yeah. can't be a singer-songwriter and call yourself, you can't be John Mayer. I mean, John Mayer 2 or anything. Yeah, whatever. Right. You can't, yeah, you can't I be understand. that. I understand. Mean, it's, it's definitely such a weird coincidence. But so it's at that time, you, you're a touring kind of, or, a, you know, a coffee shop or a, what do we call it? I mean, every until, possible right. place you can imagine, Louis. Yep. It's like bars, clubs, co there's this coffee shop in Pasadena we used to play. Um, yeah, yeah, everywhere. Everywhere. And so what happens, though, at that time is, is that your song gets on Grey's Anatomy and a couple yeah. other things. Yeah, that was, the, that was a big moment because it was the first time that people who were n that I didn't know, and lots of them, were expressing interest in what I was doing. Right, right, and right. It, and I was getting this feedback from people. At that, at that time, it was MySpace was what. Right, and right. Yeah, it's crazy when you think about it. Yeah. Like, there was no... Facebook then. Right. There was no, there were no smartphones then. Yeah. I mean. No YouTube. What? Yeah. I don't think there was YouTube. Yeah. There no, wasn't YouTube. It wasn't YouTube. really out yet. That came along right about Facebook time. Yeah. yeah. So it was MySpace. And um, yeah, the, the MySpace numbers went crazy and yeah. people were downloading the song. And so that, I think less, that was less about anything concrete that happened as a result of it and more about the confidence that it gave me at the time okay i think to yeah. feel oh people who don't know me m will respond to this right you know i mean los angeles is a really hard place yeah it, there's yeah. so many other people doing it and right. they're all good right exactly right you know it's i mean that's a really challenging environment to be young in to find that spot. Yeah. So at that time though, you kind of became more doing touring and, and this became the other chapter of really seeing the nation. I mean, can you tell me a little yeah, bit that about was, that? Yeah, that was, I mean, so that, that's what followed was, okay, um, I've got this album now. Right. And what do you do with an album? I guess you book right. gigs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and I was in LA, so I went online I love this, I, and I met this guy later. There's a songwriter at the time, Hans York. Okay. And I went online and I found Hans York's, I was just searching acoustic music Seattle or whatever, because that's where, I'll go to Seattle, I'll go to Portland, I'll try to figure it out. And every time I searched something, I would get Hans York's webpage would come up. Yeah. So I go to Hans York's shows and see where he's playing and then email those places. Okay. And I cobbled together a summer tour. It's kind of like you were on the tailwind of Hans Jorg. Yeah, right? I mean, and literally. You, did you ever when I met him years later, it was like, right, you're right. Hans Jorg. Right. <laughs> <laughs> that was kind of rad. That's a great story for yeah. him, too. It's like, wow, you know? Yeah, I mean, yeah. It helps that he kind of broke the wind pattern away for you. Yeah, yeah I mean, and I, that's funny to think. I don't know how people do it now. I guess they probably go to Instagram or something and see where people are playing. But that's how you do it. I mean, right. you, you know? You just figure it out. Yeah. And you were driving around, I think, in like a Honda Civic or one of these cars. You, yeah, I had you a Honda put some Civic big miles on it. Named Glenn. Right. That was it. I mean, I lived in that thing. I, I did not have an address for two years. Yeah. And so at that time, I mean, I, I don't want to jump ahead, but you, you did kind of burn through the car and decided that it was going to be another chapter, which is going to have more to do with bicycling. Yeah. I mean, that's, a, that's an evolving process. But... Um, because I because it didn't happen that cleanly, right? Right. But yeah, when there's this beautiful moment, I c it's hard to let go of a car. You know, yes. It's an emotional thing. Right. Right. You and close. especially when you live in it and it you drive it all over the country, your friends are in it, it you make your living with it. So I wouldn't let that car go, and it was like uh, there were. It was just, it, had, it was time for it to go. There was no reason to put another dollar into that. Thing. Right. Right. And I brought it into this 
mechanic <laughs> in the mission in San Francisco, and I was like, what, tell, tell me what I got to do to fix this thing. You know, tell me what's got to happen. And I come back an hour later, and he's like, I will not work on this car. Okay. <laughs> it's time to let this car right, you know, right. He really gave me that. That was a gift. And so for a number of reasons, I mean, f for one thing, I'd, I couldn't afford a new car that was reliable. And I didn't want a pay I didn't want payments because I just didn't want to have that financial burden. I mean, the nature of the independent songwriter lifestyle is you got to be free as a bird. Yeah, right? you got to keep yeah. it keep it tight. Got to right, keep your right. budget tight. And so, and you can rent cars. You can get to places and rent cars for a week. Right. So I figured maybe I'll just that's what I'll do. And I was into the bike already. I had just gotten back into the bike for transportation in San Francisco right before Glenn died. And Glenn is the car. Glenn is the car. Right, exactly. Yeah. Right. And, and it's also just a pain to have a car in San Francisco. I mean, there's no place to park it. Right. You spend thousands of dollars a year on parking fees. Right, right. It's a mess. So uh, kind of transitioning into your style of music, because I, I was listening on uh, Apple Music about the, uh, the uh, album you had live in Austin. It was really cool, and it was really live. And it's, your lyrics are very dense. Uh, you must have a photographic memory in a sense or some type of a memory to remember and they kind of add to each other each kind of chorus that goes to the verse. Oh, cool. They're not like the simple kind of rock and roll songs. It's, well, I mean, do you find that that style that you picked that up from somewhere before? Or? That's a great, yeah. I, yeah, I don't, I mean, I think any artist is a combination of who knows what, everything right. that they get put into them, from Back to the Future when I was right, right, right. six to Guns N' Roses, <laughs> this is like the Guns right. N' Roses interview, but to Eminem, to what, I mean, that, all of that gets in there. Right, right, right. Um, I also, I don't know about photographic memory, but when I was doing theater, I had to memorize Shakespeare right, exactly. monologues and things, soliloquies. Right. So I, I think that's probably part of it too, but. Well, is, it, is any of that stuff freestyled? I mean, you're talking about Eminem. It's like, was any of no, it? No, no. It's all I mean, very well the scripted. The in-betweens, yeah. you know, any banter or discussion is usually somewhat improvised, although not always. But the, the songs are, are written. Are written by the out. time it's a song and the words are written, that's, it's done. That's what's exactly on yeah. there. I mean, you have a new album coming out. Uh, do you want to tell us yeah, a little forthcoming. about it? Yeah, forthcoming. I mean, I... Um, I'll play a song from that w it, to, to end our time together, but yeah. it was really, I had, I've had a bunch of songs developing over the last year, largely piano based. And when I got back from a bunch of touring I was doing last fall, I did this show in San Francisco in, in Golden Gate Park and the sound guy was like, hey, I do this internship program at Hyde Street Studios if you ever want to come in it's like free studio time and the interns are there. And, and the timing was just perfect because I was thinking, I guess I gotta start to think about the next thing I'm gonna make. And then wow. he said that. Hyde Street, it's like the classic studio where the Grateful Dead and uh, Jefferson Airplane recorded there. It's like in right. the middle of it. Um, so it's got really good gear and everything. So I was like, yeah, this is Evan, is my friend that, that brought this up. So I'm like, yeah, let's go in and do that. And like, you don't tell yourself that you're making an album because it's, that's, you don't want to make that, put that heat on it. Right. But once I got in there, I did a handful of songs that day and I went back and listened to them. I was like, okay, yeah, let's do the other handful of songs. We right, another right, day. right, you already And did. that's the album. I mean, it's just live piano vocal in two days plus some overdub vocal stuff later that I did. But really the, the bones of the album is just those two days. Basically. Well, we, we also definitely do want to talk about you have a podcast, too. Yes. Yeah, um, yeah. Audiodes is the name right. of the podcast. Uh, and, and I just yeah. did the 50th one. We're 50th, that's 50th awesome. 50th anniversary yeah. of Audiodes. So I just, and I just put out the 51st. So what would, I didn't mean to interrupt you, but yeah. what, what would you describe? Is this you talking to other musicians, it, artists? It's pretty gamut? much, it's kind of all kinds of things. I, I describe it as a monthly 
collage, okay. audio collage, right, right. of reflections of American culture, news, and events. So the song is, is some kind of feelings about San Francisco? Yeah, is the, that? the song is called Never Had a Home, yeah. and it's going to be on the new album. Okay. I'll, I'll play it on the guitar here, but it, yeah. it's on piano there. And yeah, it, it occurred to me, let's see, when did I write that? Last spring, yeah. I think? It occurred to me one day I was on a bike ride and I was just looking at where I was and I was thinking that I felt at home. Yeah. And I felt that I had that. And yeah. I and all these this <laughs> we really you're like we really like went through the whole story of my little insignificant life here. <laughs> but in my little insignificant life, I've never had that. I didn't feel at home in Minnesota. Yeah. It was a place that I lived, but I never had that feeling. Yeah. I never felt that in Brooklyn, I never felt it in LA. But I do feel it in this little neighborhood in that bizarre, constantly evolving, changing city, in that state with no water. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know? It's drought. I, it's yeah. crazy. There was a day, in maybe this is why I feel that, is because I have been there for so long and I've experienced so much there. There was a day in, this, in September of 2020 when the sun did not rise yeah. because of the wildfire smoke. We woke up and it was still dark. Yeah. And we lived through that. Right. And then when that smoke came down, we were dizzy in our apartment from inhaling the smoke. Yeah. And we lived through that. You lived through it. You know, when you, yeah. it's just, when you live through those things, you become connected to the place. Right. So by the way, John, I forgot to ask you, uh, how did you come up with John Elliott? What was the reason for John Elliott? I was a lot of different names in that yeah. attempt, but yeah, I settled on Elliot because my grandmother had dementia, and one of her last memories was of seeing E.T. with me when I was very young, and she got it confused in her head that I was the kid from E.T., right. Elliot. So my whole childhood, she would send me cards that would say, Dear Elliot, and E.T. figurines and things. Wow. So I wanted to keep it in the family somehow, it, like, since it wasn't my choice to change it. Right, John, right. John Mayer is a great name. Right. Clearly, it's, <laughs> you know, it's worked well. So, um, yeah, that's where that came from. Before you play, John, just uh -huh. give us a chance to see the new album and tell us also about that digital download that you have oh, right yeah. there. Oh, yeah. So this is actually the last album that it, this is on vinyl. This is North Star. And you can buy these on my website. Um, this comes with a beautiful booklet that has an original artwork for each of the songs that my friend Grace Rowland did in... Austin. And then this is the digital box set. Yeah, that's cool. What? What? <laughs> digital awesome. box set. How much what what do you think my entire life's work is worth? Is Luigi? worth the whole thing. Everything I've done on this planet creatively. I don't want to say. Well, I want to just right. hear what, what do you think? Well, what I think that would be. It's got a day's worth yeah. of music on it. I, I'm going to say you might be selling it for 50 bucks, something okay, like that. Okay, great. That's good. I like yeah. you went high. 40. 40, 40 yeah, I like that. 220s, right? Not a 220s. bad deal. And, and by the way, uh, before I forget, this is all on the website, and it's John Elliott, Here's oh. Now. Is no, it? yeah, yeah, yep. exactly. This is the same thing with the problem with the name. Yep. The Hereafter is Here. And we'll write that at the bottom dot of the... Dot com. Yep. The Hereafter is Here dot com. And that's where you can find all of John's songs. You can also Google John Elliott musician. Yeah. And you'll find it. If you You've Google John Elliott, you will get a artisanal, expensive, uh, like, sweatsuit designer, like $500 hoodies. Nice. So, yeah. But that's, that's not you. That's not yeah, me. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that is not but me. if you look at the, the, the website, we'll write that down, and you should definitely check it out. You can you get him on Apple Music. I think you're on Spotify, probably. I'm on all of them, yeah. All of those platforms. Yeah. And in a second, I'm going to get out of the way so that John can play uh, his song here. And then we're going to close out the show with that. Uh, we had a great conversation. I'm glad that you guys stuck with me, and I, I appreciate thanks it very much. Thanks for having me, Luigi. Thank yeah, you, that sir. Was fun. And thanks for the song coming up. You got it. All right, awesome. Mm -hmm. I've had chances, I've had luck I've had friends who care for me I've had reasons to give up And a loving family I've had places where I lived 
with a zip code and a bed but I never had a home until now I've been all around this planet I've been hot and I've been cold I've been inside the offices where lives are made and sold I've had a lot of nothing and I've had some poor man's gold but I never had a home until now when my arms were empty I had nothing left to lose no one to come back to and nothing left to lose now that I have something I want to keep and own. I understand how easy it was just to be alone. First I sat inside a church and I heard the preacher growl. Then I traveled in a caravan and I heard coyotes howl. I lost myself in nonsense and I barely made it out cause I never had a home until now then I lived inside the city and I learned the underground then I made it to the mountains and I hated what I found prophesized and plundered through the valleys and the town cause I never had a home until now I found the fancy scene I was cool and I was quick I learned their names they took me in I was thin and I was hip and I lost it all one summer and I really paid for it and I never got it back not even close to what I had no I never got it back not even close All the stars are empty, all the stars are dead, all the animals are dying, all the news is full of dread. There are reasons to be angry, there are reasons to be scared, there are reasons to believe in love that isn't even there I've had women treat me rough and women treat me well I've had women take their time with me and women kiss and tell I've had women scratch my skin and women tell me true but I've never had a home until you no I never had a home until you